Okay, folks, let's get started. That was quick. You guys must be ready to dive into this stuff. Yeah. The end is near. You see, morale goes up near the end. So this is what's happening here, I think. Okay. Um, I last time described to you the ATP synthase, uh, which is also known as complex 5. And I don't know if you had a chance to look at the video or not, but if you didn't, I want you to see it because it's very cool. So... Um, This actually is going on in your mitochondria all the time. There's actually audio that goes with it, but I'm going to describe it. Let me just turn this down so you can see a little better. Okay, so there's that rotating wheel. Here's the mushroom head. And you can see up here protons coming in. So see the protons coming in? They're actually causing that little wheel to spin. So they come in, they latch on to a part of that, that little wheel, and this increasing uh, addition of protons causes the wheel to turn. As we look on the other side of it, we see the protons going all the way around, and they come and they exit on the other side. Okay? So they make a complete, almost a complete transit, and they're coming literally from top, around, and then down. So these protons are being driven into the mitochondrial matrix. They're coming from outside the matrix into the matrix. And that's the driving force for moving that, that wheel. The wheel is attached to this thing that's inside of the mushroom head. And the change of position of this thing on the inside causes this to go from L to T to O, et cetera. So there's an L binding an ADP and a PI. Now it's going to come out as an ATP when it's in the open configuration. That's almost like a heart there, doesn't it? Okay. And so now this is uh, another view of the same thing, but you can see ATP is going to come out. Here's ADP and PI going in, ATP going out, ADP and PI coming in, ATP going out there, ATP is going to come out here next, etc. A pretty phenomenal thing. Now this guy right here can probably synthesize on the order of hundreds of ATPs per second. Pretty cool. Pretty darn cool. Okay, I think that's a good place to stop it. So let me stop it there. Bring the lights up. Okay, and that's the overall process that occurs. Okay, now, um, so that's the complex five, that's ATP synthase, as I said. And what I want to do now is uh, finish up talking about some considerations for what these, these processes mean. Okay? These processes mean important things. So I, last time I alluded to respiratory control. And today I want to tell you something about respiratory control. Okay? So because of your knowledge now of complex five and the electron transport system and the role of oxygen in accepting electrons as the terminal electron acceptor of the electron transport system, you can now get a much better picture of what's happening inside of your body. Okay? So let's um, think about what we're, we're doing. So let's say I decide I want to go run a race. All right? And I say, okay, I'm going to run a 100-yard dash, which I'm not very good at. I'm much more of a jogger. But I decide I'm going to run a 100-yard dash. I'm going to really burn that energy up. I'm going to take off. I'm going to go running. What's the first thing that's going to happen? Well, to do muscular contraction, my muscles have got to burn ATP. That's how muscles contract. That's the energy source for muscular contraction. So I very quickly burn up some ATP. Okay? I burn that ATP, and my liver gets a signal that, whoa, Ahern is doing something. We better uh, send him some, some energy. Okay? Well. What's my body going to need if it is making ATP? Well, one of the things that my body's going to need is it's going to need oxygen. If I start burning ATP, let's say I've been sitting around. All right, let me, let me back up. I'll, I'll actually draw this, paint this picture in a different way. Let's, let's say we start where I finished the last lecture. I'm sitting around. 
I am eating pizza, drinking beer, and watching the tube. Okay? And I've been doing that for most of the afternoon. What's my stocks of ATP? My stocks of ATP are very high. Right? What's my stocks of NADH? They're actually fairly high also. Okay? What's my oxygen use? It's low, right? So my oxygen use is low. That means my NADH concentration is going to go up, right? I'm not burning any ATP. I'm not sitting there doing anything except consuming calories. All of a sudden, the uh, smoke alarm goes off in my house, and I've got to get the heck out of there, all right? So I grab my most valuable things, which probably includes my TV, my computer, right? And I go scrambling to get out the door. I start burning ATP, right? When I start burning ATP, what becomes more available? NAD. Okay. I'm sorry. A I can't even talk today. ADP. When I burn ATP, I make ADP, right? So now I've got ADP available. What was the concentration of protons outside my mitochondrion before this all happened? High or low? It was high, right? Because I haven't been converting them back to NAD. It's been high. It's just sitting there waiting for something to happen. I haven't been making ATP. Why? Because I have no ADP. So the very first thing that happens is going to make, make some ADP. And now the complex 5 says, oh, look, we've got ADP. Let's let some ADP go through. ADP, I'm sorry, let, let some protons go through and make ATP. I'm really bad today, aren't I? Let's let some protons go through and we'll make ATP. When protons come through, what happens to the proton gradient? It goes down, right? As the proton gradient goes down, what happens to the concentration of NADH? It goes down also, right? Because now there's, pro there's, there's electrons moving through electron transport system. Now there's something that can take those electrons away from NADH. And now my concentration of NAD is going to go up. When my concentration of NAD goes up, what happens to my citric acid cycle? It starts working. So I'm sitting there doing nothing. None of these processes are working, at least not working very well. Once I start to exercise, bang, they all kick in because they're all interlinked with each other. Okay? Would you like me to step through that again? All right. Watching TV, doing nothing. All right? ATP concentration high, NADH concentration high, proton gradient high. Okay? Nothing's going on. What's happening to the citric acid cycle? Not much of anything. Right? Because I've got all NADH there. I need NAD. Right? Fire alarm goes off. I jump. I grab my stuff. I burn some ATP because my muscles need that to go exercise to get out of the house. ATP gets converted to ADP. So ADP concentration goes up. Now complex 5 says, look, we've got some ADP. We can let protons in and make some more ATP. So protons come in. ATP gets synthesized, right? When protons come in, ATP gets synthesized. Electron transport's going to start again, right? Electron transport starts again. What's going to happen to concentration of NAD? It's going to go up because NADH is donating electrons into electron transport system. What's happening to my use of oxygen as I'm doing this? It's going to go up. Because when I run electron transport, I need to have an electron acceptor at the end. That's oxygen. Yes? Yep. No. Her, her question is, you, she doesn't envision that the proton gradient just increases and just sits there. But in fact, it does. And the reason it does is your cell is trying to convert as much NADH as it can back to NAD. So it keeps pumping those protons as much as it can. And finally, the proton gradient gets so high, it can't pump anymore. It just sits there. That's an important consideration. Yes? When I say exercising versus not exercising, I'm talking about going out and exercising. I mean, if you're sitting here scratching your eye, you know, you're exercising, right? So we never have a situation where we're not burning any ATP. Right? These are all relative things, okay? But when I'm out jogging in the morning, I'm burning more ATP than when I'm lecturing in this classroom, for example, okay? 
because I'm out there, I'm really, those muscles are contracting, they're doing their, their thing. Right? So we never have a situation where we're not using any ATP. Even when we die, our hair continues to grow until you run out of ATP for that. There's actually an interesting story about why you, why you, what, what rigor mortis actually is. Okay? And it, the, it, your muscles are, become locked uh, after a point. And that's, that's, that's what rigor mortis is. And it's, it's, a, it's a cool story, so I'll, I'll tell you sometime about that. I won't tell you now. Okay, so <coughs> let's complicate the picture. I'm a biochemist. I'm paid to complicate the picture, right? Let's complicate the picture. Actually, before we complicate the picture, let's think about diet drugs. This is something that always comes up at this point. Diet drugs. Wow, I know all this about metabolism. Maybe I can design a diet drug that allow me to take a magic pill and go to sleep at night and burn off fat. Okay? I get at least one question a year from somebody about that. I said this in the magazine. Is it real? No. Okay? Just get it out of your heads. It's not real. Okay? It's BS. It's somebody that wants to sell you a pill. However, there was a magic diet pill. A magic diet pill that was sold around the turn of the 20th century. And it did exactly what the diet pills today claim to do. You're laughing, but it's true. You took the diet pill at night, you burned off fat, you woke up the next morning and you were literally skinnier. It was the perfect diet pill. Okay? With one exception. About 10% of the people who took it died. Okay? Well, what was it? It was a compound called 2,4-dinitrophenol, or as we'll call it in this class, DNP. You guys heard about, heard about this? Okay. So DNP is what we call a, um, a membrane permeabilizer. It pokes holes in the inner layer of the, the inner membrane of the mitochondrion. When it pokes holes, guess what happens to the proton gradient? All the protons come in through the hole. If you poke a hole in the dam, doesn't all the water go through it? You poke a hole in the inner mitochondrial membrane, all the protons come through it. Now let's imagine that I'm asleep at night, and I, and I take my magic DNP pill before I go to sleep, and it starts poking holes in my mitochondrial membranes at night. What's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen to the proton gradient? High or low? Low, because the dam is broken, now things are flowing through. When the dam is broken, what happens to the concentration of NAD? That's a good exam question. Increases. Because when I, when I do that, what happens? I'm letting electrons flow, right? Electrons are flowing. Before, the electrons were not flowing. Why? Because the membrane was intact. We had all the ATP we needed. We're laying there asleep. We're not doing anything. Now the electrons have a way around making ATP. They're coming in, but no ATP is being made. They don't have to go through complex five anymore. They come in through the hole. Yowza. Okay, let's extend this a little further. So if my NAD concentrations go up, what happens to my citric acid concentration, or citric acid cycle? It starts spinning like crazy. I'm burning things. I'm burning things while I'm asleep. What happens to my oxygen usage? Something's got to accept all those electrons, right? I start breathing heavily when I'm asleep. You must be having a really good dream there, Larry. <laughs> right? Not only are you having a good dream, but you're generating a lot of heat because you got all those metabolic processes going on generating all that energy. Okay? It's a perfect diet pill, except it kills about 10% of the people who do it. The next question I always get, you guys know what it is, right? What if it took just a little bit? Just a little bit, you know, I don't want to lose a lot of weight, I just want to use a, lose a little bit of weight. Right? To which I say, well, why don't you take a little bit of arsenic with that at the same time? I think it'd be a good idea, you know? A little bit of arsenic couldn't hurt you too much, could it? That's what happens with it. Okay, so you can see how these processes are interconnected. What, to, what DNP is doing is it's, it's breaking respiratory control. It's breaking respiratory control. To have respiratory control, we have to have an intact mitochondrial inner membrane. When we have respiratory control, it means the following. Electron transport is linked 